Amen. Amen. Uh, what a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Uh, time to seek God, for He is a God who is faithful. He is a God who hears when we pray, when we call on His name, He answers our prayers. Uh, today, I have been meditating on this word uh, where the Lord says, behold, I am God and nothing or no one can hinder my purposes. And one time in the book of Job, uh, Job chapter 42, after he had gone through everything that he went through, he came to a conclusion and said, now I know that you are God and that your purposes cannot be thwarted. Your Hallelujah. purposes cannot be hindered. And I believe at this moment, at this season, that the purposes of God concerning us cannot be hindered, cannot be thwarted. And the plans that God has upon each and every one of us are plans of good and not of evil. I greet you all tonight. I enjoy being in Monday Fellowship. I've been away for some couple of Mondays, but I thank God for the grace. And I thank God for what he is doing in this new season because we are in a new season. And I just want to share briefly as the Lord uh, lays uh, stuff in my spirit. I was preparing and praying and asking the Lord, what do I share with the fellow uh, uh, brethren of Monday Fellowship? And uh, the spirit of the Lord was laying in my spirit to continue sharing what I shared yesterday in the church. And I thought um, in my own mind, I thought, maybe I should look for something else. And in the process of trying to look for something else, I ended up going back to the same text. And that is the text I wanna share. I believe that the word of God is new every day. And so even if you had this word yesterday, uh, open your heart and be expectant to hear it in a new way and to receive a new revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you all who are logged in through the Zoom line and those who are logged in through our Facebook page. I I believe that the Lord is going to minister to us and he is going to speak to us in each uh, in our level at, at our level everyone at our level according to his will and the topic of my message today is breaking the limitation breaking the limitation um, I was thinking about the issue of the way the pandemic happened and that so many things changed and there was confinement, confinement of our personal life, confinement of the church, confinement of so many things. There was that, there has been that limitation, the things that you planned to do, you cannot do them. Uh, the, the way we used to congregate, we could not congregate for a long time. And in the midst of that, uh, a change it is easy for us to adopt and call it now this is the new normal and in the midst of adopting we limit ourselves not to do that which we have the ability to do or we limit ourselves because of the environment because of the season or because of what is happening around us it is so easy for us to limit ourselves it is so easy for us to just slide and uh, and just be comfortable in the circumstances that we have found ourselves in and as i talk about limitation i want you to just imagine about the the, the when you're driving the some roads if you're driving through the back roads there is a speed limit on those back road mostly 25 to 30 you cannot go to any beyond 30 uh, miles per hour but the same vehicle that you're driving on those back road when you hit the highway the same vehicle has the capacity, it has the ability to adapt or to accelerate to the speed limit of the highway praise the name of the Lord. And so as we talk about the limitation and breaking limitation, I want you to know that in you, there is a lot of potential. The grace of God is sufficient to enable you to do great things, to enable you to fulfill his divine purpose on earth. The grace of God is available and the gifting and the talents and the calling is there. It is irrevocable. Whatever God has given you as a gift, as a 
as a talent, as a calling. God is not like a man. You know, when people give you a gift, later on they may say, I, I have come for my gift. I don't want you to have it anymore. But with God, it is permanent. Whatever he has entrusted you with, it is permanent. The talents he has given you, it is permanent. And one thing I love about our God, he does not only give us the purpose or the plan, but he also gives us the potential and he equips us in a way that we are going to be able to implement and to follow through and fulfill that purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. And so as I talk about breaking the limitation today, uh, it might be the limitations that you have found yourself in. There might be the limitation that you have also put yourself in because sometimes when situation forces us to, to just draw back and pull back, sometimes we speak to ourselves and we preach to ourselves that, you know what? I cannot go beyond here. I cannot do this and that. So as we speak about breaking limitation, it is personal. Apply this to yourself, to your, to your current status, so that you know what kind of limitations are you breaking? What kind of limitations are you going to go beyond tonight in the name of Jesus Christ? And I believe that as we continue sharing this word, we are going to continue even making declarations in the name of Jesus Christ. So as I was saying, the same car that drives on the back road at 30 or 25 miles an hour, it has the potential to drive on the highway at 65 and some other highways you can drive, you are allowed even to go at 75 miles. But the same car has even a, a the capacity to drive beyond that, the, the capacity or to speed or to drive uh, the speed that is required is in the car, it's in the engine, it has has that capacity but what dictates the the speed is where the car is if you're driving in the back road the road dictates how far you can go if you're driving in the in the in the in the highway the road dictates how far you can drive and i want us to look at our life and i want you to understand this even if you have found yourself in a place where you are limited you are not able to exercise the full potential you are not able to serve the lord fully as you would wish do not believe the lie of the enemy that that situation is permanent or that situation is what should dictate how much you can do or how far you can go because it's just the road, it's just the season, praise the name of the Lord. And at this time, the whole world, we are at the season that has made many people feel that they are limited. They can't go beyond how they feel they should do or how they know they can do. One thing I don't want you to lose is the knowledge and the understanding that the power to break the limitation, the power to be all that God intended you to be as in you. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, that now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what we may think or imagine, huh? through the power that worketh within us. I want you to know that there is power within you. That power to break the limitation we are talking about tonight, that power is within you. That power is within him and to him be the glory and power forevermore. So the power is already deposited within you. It is inside of you. The power to break this limitation is inside of you. And as I was thinking and praying, I thought about the seasons and the signs that we are seeing at this time. You no, know, Jesus spoke and said that we are able to look at the clouds and the sky and we know that it's going to rain. And he said the same way the physical things teaches us, uh, the physical things we are able to design, the seasons and the time, is the same way we should be able to look at the signs and understand what is happening in the spiritual realm. And I have come to tell you this season that we have already entered into a new dispensation. We have 
already entered into a new season as a church as brethren we have entered into a new season i say this when the covid struck and we were locked down i said do not waste this time because that is the time of preparation you know like the way you go for boot camp and you're trained and you're prepared that season was a season of a preparation but now we have entered into another season and this is a new dispensation and at this season, the Lord is saying, what I have purposed to do, I will do. And no one will be able to withstand. No one will be able to thwart all the purposes that I have. It is for us now, brethren, to understand it is a new season. We cannot be limited anymore. We cannot hold back anymore. It is a new season. And even if the situation or the seasons limited us, the power to break forth is within us the power to break forth is within us and so as we speak about our breaking limitations I want us to understand what is involved in that in that season of breaking limitation and going beyond and just aligning ourselves with what the Lord is doing. Uh, on Friday and on Saturday, there was this big congregation, and I, I don't know whether it was reported in the news, but brethren and Christians gathered in Washington and they were holding this conference called Return, Return to God. And thousands and thousands of believers showed up and before the gathering uh people were, were fasting for 10 days crying out and asking the lord for mercy in america that we should return to god some of these things we see happening these are signs that are saying it is a new season it is a new season and my brother my sister let us not miss this divine visitation at one time jesus looked at jerusalem and he cried he cried in anguish and this is how he said as he wept over jerusalem he said all oh, that thou would desire all oh, that thou would know the time of your visitation it is my prayer that the lord and the Holy Spirit will not be grieved by us, brethren, at this season. It is my prayer that we are going to design a shift in the season, a new dispensation. And any time there is a change in the season, there is a discipline that is required of every season. When we enter into winter, eh, we, nobody needs to tell you it is time to bundle up, it is time to keep warm, because the season of the winter dictates that you do that and i want to tell you brethren tonight that the new season we have entered as the church this new season dictates that we operate in the discipline of the season it is a season that the lord will show himself strong it is a season that the lord will manifest his glory it is a season that the lord will reign his reign of revival it is a season that there shall be a great awakening it is a season of harvest harvest of souls and so we need to be prepared we need to understand it is a new season we cannot continue behaving like we are still in the season of preparation we cannot continue behaving like we have forgotten the mandate that was given unto us it is a new season and in this season, we have to break every limitation, the limitation of the mind, all those voices and sounds that have spoken to you and showed you that you cannot make it, you cannot mount up to anything, or your time has not come, especially that lie, the lie that the enemy whispers to many, especially the young people, the devil keeps telling them, oh, you know what, your time is not yet, you know, you are the church of tomorrow, I have come to tell you it is time to break those limitations and we do that which the Lord requires us to do because it is a new season it is a new season and the text that I was prepared to read I want you to just take time and read at, at your own time it's in the book of second Kings chapter 6 uh, it talks about the sons of the prophet they designed a new dispensation before then the person who was the leader of the prophets was Elijah and Elijah operated like a lone man he was not he, he, his social skills were lacking 
uh, he would just dwell alone in the mountains. And at one point, we see that people are going to seek other gods, the gods of Ekron. And Elijah seated on the mountaintop just calls for fire and the fire consumes the army. That was the kind of a man he was when he was told to go and appoint Elisha so that he may be uh, his armor bearer or he may replace him. Elijah did not even talk to Elisha. We find that he goes, finds Elisha, draws the cloak on him, his, his garment on him, and doesn't talk to him, doesn't tell him anything. And when it was time for him to be taken away by the chariots of fire, we find that every place they went with Elisha, they were the sons of the prophets. The sons of the prophets did speak to Elijah, but they called Elisha and told him, you know what? Do you know that your master is going to be taken away? And Elisha, we find that he was operating in another way. His, his character was different. He was somebody relating with the people. He could relate with the sons of the prophets. And he told the sons of prophets, I know. Be silent, hold your peace. And in every place he went, he went to Bethel, they went to Jericho, they went to Gilgal, they went to Jordan. The sons of the prophets were there and who spoke with them? Elisha spoke with them and told them, I know, hold your peace. And so when Elijah was taken by the wheel wheel and Elisha has now received a double portion of the anointing, the mantle of Elijah, the sons of the prophet designed a change in the season. They knew that this is a season that we can break the limit. This is a season that we can make expansion. This is a season that we don't need to be limited anymore. We don't need to re remain in a small place. And they go to Elisha and they tell him, you know what, man of God, the place that we live in is small. We are not comfortable. We need to enlarge the place. Because they designed the season has changed. It is no longer the season of Elijah, the prophet of fire. This is a season of Elisha. And Elisha is relating with them. Elisha is approachable. Elisha, uh, they can talk with him. You find that immediately after he received the mantle, you, you go read every place and every miracle that Elisha performed. There was interaction and communication with the people. Elijah was God, people, judgment, and, and that's it. And that's why you find that even when he was running and depressed, all alone, he thought he was the only prophet. And so that dispensation was over. It was now a new season. And the sons of the prophets knew it is a new season. We have to tap into this season. We have to expand. We have to break the limitation. And so they talked with Elisha and they told him what they think they sh that should be done. And so I want us to understand in the season of breaking the limitation, one thing we need to understand is this, that there has to be desire. You have to desire from your heart. Amen. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and it shall meet with the desires of your heart. And I want to ask you tonight, what are the desires of your heart for you to be able to break the limitation for you to be able to do that which God has called you to do there has to be desire you have to desire it first a desire must be bad and I know that many of us have that we desire and it is well but beyond desire the next thing we find with the sons of the prophet they did not only express the desire but they took another step and they made a desire Praise the name of the Lord. So after desire, it is important to desire. It is good to bad desire, but it is important for you to make a decision. There are so many people who are saying, I desire to sing. I desire to preach. I desire to do this. I desire to do that. Beyond desire, take the next step and make a decision. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the sons of the prophets had already made a decision. They said, this is what we're going to do. We are going to go down to Jordan and we're going to cut down beams and come up and build and expand our place. They had made a decision. 
And then from there we find that Elisha gave them permission. They were asking for permission. And the man of God said, it's okay, you guys, you can go. But one of them posted before they go, one of them posted and said, why don't you accompany us, man of God? You have given us the permission, yes, but we need the presence. Let's go with you. And in this dispensation, I want to tell you that it is important for us to go beyond permission. You know, we, we go before the Lord and we seek the Lord like we are asking for permission to do something. And beyond permission, beyond permission, there is something that is more than permission. And that is the presence, praise the name of the Lord. So the sons of the prophets received the permission to go and expand. But they knew one thing. We have the go ahead of the man of God. But one of them was wise. He said, no, yes, we have the permission, but we need the presence. And in this season, I know that many of us have been in the place of prayer. And we have blueprints of what the Lord has told us. We have blueprints of what the Lord requires of us. And some of us are very convinced that we have the backing of heaven. We have the backup of heaven. I know that, that even many people step out into the ministry with that assurance that this is God. He has called me. He has spoken to me. I know that heaven is backing me. But I want to tell you one thing. Just like this one son of the prophet knew that permission is good but the presence is better praise the name of the Lord we need to seek the presence of God we need to be like Moses when he said to God do not take us from here if your presence does not go with us Lord we are not gonna leave this place yes we have the desire to break the limits yes we have made the decision to do something about it Yes, we have your love stamp, the seal that it is okay, we can do this, but we don't want to do it on our own. We don't want to go alone. We need your presence. We need your presence. And that is my prayer. And that is the desire of my heart, church at this new dispensation that we are going to desire the presence more than the permission. We are going to desire to walk with him and work with him more than work for him. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to say that again, that we are going to understand that he desires to work with us, walk with us, but not so much about working for him. Praise the name of the Lord. Because many of us are busy working for the Lord. Oh, and we sing this song, I will be somewhere working for my Lord. But I want to change that chorus today and we sing and we desire that I will be somewhere working with the Lord. We are his co-workers. Oh, yes, we are his co-workers. We are not supposed to work independently. We may receive the permission, but we need the presence. And so in our decision making, oh, we desire the presence of the Lord in this new dispensation, in this new season that we have entered. May your heart desire his presence. May your heart seek his presence. Moses lingered and tarried at the mountain and he said, Lord, don't send us with an angel. No, 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 we cannot go without you. And God is like you people are stiff naked, you are laborious. If I go with you, I will slay you. And Moses is like, it doesn't matter. We need your presence because it is only your presence that will make a distinction between us and other nations. And in this new dispensation, as we step out and move to break the limitation, as we step out into this new season, I want to declare to you, and if you're writing, write this down, there is going to be a distinction. There is going to be a distinction. And what is going to bring that distinction is those that are walking and working with the Lord. 
not necessarily working for the Lord because God desires a relationship. If it was not about relationship, he would not have paid the price. He would not have sent the son to die on the cross. He would not have spilled the blood that was precious to pay the debt of sin so that you may be reconciled with him. My brother, my sister, I urge you, it is time you reflect back and ask yourself, am I working for the Lord or am I working with the Lord? Because it makes all the difference. Because the next thing that I'm going to share with you is that if the sons of the prophets had just gone on their own, then they would not have accomplished the mission. Because in the midst of the work, in the midst of cutting the beams, oh, one man had a borrowed art and it fell in the river. And he cried out. He cried out and said, alas, it has fallen and it was borrowed. It wasn't even mine. And one thing I want us to understand in this season of breaking limitation, we have to have determination. This man would have remained behind and said, you know what? I don't have an axe. You guys go. I'll be back here interceding or making lunch or making dinner for you but he's saying no i cannot be left behind i better borrow a nurse and become a partaker of this expansion and so for us to see the break of the limitations we have to be determined so i i have said you have to have desire you make the decision and go beyond permission seek the presence and then be determined because in the midst of us doing what God wants us to do in this new season, there will be distractions. There will be battles. It's not going to be easy. There will be challenges, but we have to keep going. And what keeps us going and what covers us from shame and defeat is his presence. When the axe fell, what the enemy had intended for shame and embarrassment became a testimony that is written down to encourage us today because God performed a miracle that went against the laws of gravity, the laws of nature. We know very well that iron does not float, but that day, because they had not gone alone, the iron float and it became a testimony. And so that is why I'm saying there shall be be a distinction in this new season. All oh, challenges will come alike. All oh, challenges will come alike for those who are working for the Lord and those who are working with the Lord. The challenges will come. Just like the way the Bible says about one man who built his foundation the fall of the house upon a rock. And the other one didn't want to do the work. Hallelujah. You know, when we talk about the presence, it means doing the work. Oh, fellowship, relationship, intimacy with God. It is work. Prayer is work and prayer work. And not many people want to do the work of prayer. And so it's like that man who built his house upon the sand. Listen to me. The, the winds, the rains, the storms came to both houses. And that is what the Lord is saying at this season. Yes, we have entered into a new dispensation, but distractions and challenges will come. What will make us come out victorious is if we have his presence. If you are working with him and not just for him. Hallelujah. It is a new season. It is a new season. And so in this new season, don't mind the challenges that you encounter as long as you know, I am not alone. I am not alone. I have him. I am not alone. I have the Lord. I want to pray with you. And I know that you're going to even take more time and pray for yourself. This is a new season. Do not be passed by. Let not the Holy Spirit grieve for you because you are not getting it or understanding that it is a new season 
do not remain stuck there. There is a grace that has been released, a grace to break limitations, a grace to bring in the harvest. It is a new season. It is a new season that the Lord is going to manifest himself in ways that we have not seen before for his own glory. But the people that he is going to be working with are those who are going beyond permission and they desire his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory, dear Father. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration, dear Father. We yield to you today. We surrender to you, King of our glory. At this season, dear Lord, we yield ourselves to you, dear Father, that we may become partakers of this new dispensation. We pray in the name of Jesus that we are going to pursue your presence, to pursue your presence more than your permission, my God. And in all that you have called us and anointed and appointed us to do, dear Lord, we yield ourselves to you and declare that we surrender, Lord, we don't want to just work for you. We want to work with you, Lord. We desire your presence, dear Father. We desire your presence, oh God. Just like Moses cried out and said, let your presence go with us. Do not take us from thither if you don't go with us, Lord. In this new dispensation, Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus that we desire your presence. We desire your presence, Lord. We desire your presence, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my listener, dear Lord. If there be someone who is in that place of desire and has been stuck in the desire and not able to make the decision, I declare the grace to make the decision, the de determination to follow up with their decisions and the determination to keep going even when distractions show up and challenges show up in the name of Jesus Christ. For you have promised us, oh God, that you're taking us from one level of glory to another. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. We pray, and wherever you are, say amen. 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 It is a new season. Break the limitation, go beyond the limitation. Do not allow the situation to dictate how far you can go or what you can do. It's a new season, and God is at work to show Himself strong and to manifest Himself. It is up for us to be waiting so that we don't miss the season. May the Lord God bless you and do you good. Do I give it back to you, Pastor Alex? Yes, let me give it back to you. Thank you. Not really. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, we thank God for you. We thank God for his word. Oh, I, there's never been a time that I've decided to break the norms and break the cycles and break from all the limitations that have been there. I think, and I believe that word is for me, it's in season. And as the word of God said, you know, prayer is work, but it works. So let's pray and break out so that God's glory can be revealed in and through our lives. We thank you so much again. We appreciate and honor you, Pastor Lucy. And to all the Monday Malden Fellowship, you that are there watching and listening, may God bless you so much as we continue to work, you know, I mean, I think that's so powerful to be reminded that though prayer is a lot of work to do the prayer, but it works. You know, there are so many things we do which are not important. You know, they seem like they're important. Sometimes we give all our energy, but they don't yield the results. But when we pray, we are praying to a God who is willing to bring us. Yesterday we were being reminded about the story of, you know, what specifically was taught to Esau that when he is tired, when he becomes restless, he will break the yoke from his neck. So if we persist, if we move on, if we keep on praying, we're gonna see the goodness of God in this land. God bless you so much. Let's continue to pray for one another and to remain faithful to the calling that God has called us to be his representative, his ambassadors on this planet. God bless you so much. I love you, I'm praying for you. And I believe that this year, even though it seems as though it's been it's a cycle of things that we wouldn't have wanted us ourselves to see, but I still believe we will come out of this year 2020 in a, in a greater way. We will come out into a wealthy place by God's grace because God is working with us and for us. God bless you so much. Uh, we appreciate you. Shalom.
Shalom. Bye-bye.